I didn't see you there. Word to the haters, it's your boy, B-Boy Too Cool for Preschool. Back again by popular demand because you know, the last video did what? 24K? It's kind of like what I wear on my wrist. No big deal though. So we're back again with our very famous FreshBook Pro and we're gonna be going over the top 10 most underused freezes today. Let's go into it right now. All right, first one we're gonna go over, number 10, you guys saw me do it in my baby freeze variations tutorial, but again, I don't see why more people aren't using this, the elbow baby. It's literally, you can slide with it, you can spin in it, there's so many options you can do with this, and it's honestly not that hard, and if it hurts the elbow, just get an elbow pad, and then make some unique stuff with it. Number nine, pike, a basic pike. It's interesting how stuff tends to go in and out of popularity. And like in 2013, 2012, even early 2000s, the pike was super popular, yet nowadays I rarely see people using it. There's a couple people that definitely abuse it, but usually they're more old school. I think one of the main reasons that like a lot of people don't use pikes is because it's just seen as a basic move, but guess what? If you do a basic move uniquely, it suddenly becomes unbasic. So I would just say maybe next practice, put a little bit more time towards some pikes and see if you can make some cool stuff. Number eight, shoulder air chairs. Now shoulder air chairs is something I think only a few people really did back in the day, but I still don't see many people abusing it. And there's so much you can be done with it because you can literally just take all the stuff you do in shoulder freeze and apply that without your head, with your elbow directly under you, and you're doing a shoulder air chair. I just think it's a really effective way to take a basic and literally make it advanced. So I would play around with a shoulder air chair a little bit more. Number seven, we have our L-sit style freezes. So it's basically anything in like a boomerang style shape or an L-sit, anything around those styles. You see me use this a lot, but again, I don't see that many people using this. And I guess some people don't have the flexibility, but if you have the flexibility and strength to hold yourself there, why not make it into a freeze? There's literally endless amounts of options that can be done from spinning into actual boomerangs to l style rotations to just holds to freezes. Like there's so many different options that you can do with them. And again, I don't see many people abusing it. And it's honestly not that hard if you have the strength and flexibility to simply hold yourself and make into a freeze. Number six, we have all your standing on arm stuff. So this is all the stuff where you're standing on your forearms, the inner sides or the back or wherever. It's interesting to me because I've never viewed myself as like strong. I've never thought of myself as like a very strong strength based b-boy yet because of my flexibility and creativity, I've played around with a lot of these things when not too many b-boys do. Yes, there's a few that have really like revolutionized it like Dizzy and Benji and there's lots of other b-boys I'm sure that I'm just skipping because I'm terrible, clearly. But the average b-boy or b-girl, I don't see many people really playing around with ideas here. A lot of people tend to stay within the generic freezes and I'm just saying like, I get if you don't wanna do it because it actually hurts your skin a little bit, because you can get friction burns for sure, but apart from that, like it doesn't require that much strength, it doesn't require that much flexibility, it's literally just options for you to create moves and movements that people aren't doing today that you could use. So next time when you wanna create some more freezes, maybe try playing around with standing on your body a little bit, stand on your arms, you know, mark them up a little bit, give them some of those nice b-boy burns. Okay. Number five. So again, we have some freezes that are a little bit abstract, but when you want to start getting more original freezes and stuff, you got to look where people aren't necessarily looking or wanting to go. And that one's place is sitting on your own hands because like, that's dumb. Who wants it in your hand? Stop. Just try it. You haven't felt the coolness that you feel when sitting on your own hands. It's, it just adds a different kind of motion to it. And it's almost like, like I look at it as like, the floor is lava, but breaking version. Um, and there's a couple people, again, like B-Boy Ben Stacks, he uses this a lot. But apart from that, like I've been using them for a while and I know Dizzy uses them somewhat, but again, not that many people use these. And it literally just takes a little bit of time and creative effort and you can start creating some freezes that again, people aren't using. So I would abuse it. 
I personally love them. Number four. We have handstand freezes. What? How is that underused? Everyone uses handstands. Just give me a moment. Just listen. So the thing is with handstand freezes is I'm talking about both hands on the ground, okay? And I'm talking about people so urgently wanting to go to one-handed air freezes or spinning or doing something crazy with it. Well, have you tried holding a handstand and just playing with different shapes in a handstand? Or with playing with twisting your body in different directions? Because I don't see, again, that many B-boys or B-girls, excuse me, that are really abusing your two-handed handstand freezes, but changing it up, making it into your own advanced freeze. Now, how you do that is, again, by playing with your angles. Play with your oblique twists like this and mess around with your legs going front and back because there's a lot that can be done here that I don't see many people doing. Unless, of course, you'd be way too cool for preschool because, you know. Number three, we have your underleg spider freeze baby, whatever you want to call it, okay? You're in this position. <laughs> And again, I don't see that many people use this. And I, I seriously understand it. It requires a certain amount of flexibility, but maybe I'm just too old now and I don't see that many people in the scene. And I'm not watching every single B-Boy video ever. I know I'm apologize. I'm just so terrible that I don't watch all the footage. But I really don't think people are abusing the options that you have with this kind of motion. There's a lot of stuff that can be done here that I really don't see that many b-boys and b-girls really abusing. And again, you have to remember, I'm talking about on a grandioso scale. I'm not talking about, oh, but there's one b-boy that's really good at it. Yes, of course. I'm talking about the average, okay? The average b-boys and b-girls tend to stay within certain moves and that's why they stay there. If you wanna to get to that next level, you gotta start exploring the more advanced, creative, unique stuff. And this is one of the movements that I think you can really explore and abuse to bring to a different level. Number two, low air freezes. What? That cannot even be a thing. Oh, buddy it is. So, a low air freeze, what do I mean by that? Well, low air freeze to me, is an air freeze that is low to the ground. It's pretty obvious. But how it's not obvious is how the heck do you hold that? Well, you don't really. See, what I mean is you, you hold it just for a brief second, but again, there's so much stuff that you can be doing within that quick second that can really hit a quick beat, a quick rotation change, just there's lots that can be done in a position that can't necessarily be held by most people. Even I can't hold, hold most of it, okay? Because you need a lot of strength to be able to hold it. But that doesn't mean you can't use it as a transitional freeze to get to another movement. And that's where I think a lot of people are maybe overlooking is that you can hold your body off the ground for a split second in a lot of these positions, which is where I call a low air freeze. And then you can use that to add more unique flavor into your movement. Number one. No, I'm not trolling. I know, he, he must be trolling at this point. All this whack stuff, he must be trolling. I'm not. An upper back freeze. Holy camoly, Batman. That must not be true. It is. But that's not even a freeze, that's a yoga pose. I know, I hear you. I understand that if it doesn't feel super advanced and hard, it can't be good because that's not how it works. And you must work hard to get something hard. To be good, you must be good. Well, guess what? Maybe doing less sometimes is a little bit more. And what I mean by this is there's so many people that overlook an upper back freeze simply because it's Oh, I've only seen yoga people do it as whack. Well. They prejudge it. But guess what? Have you ever gone to that position and played around with different movements? Played around with different transitions? I'm not talking about just the generic 
backspin from your back. Because yes, a lot of people do that and I understand that people get that one. I'm talking about using it as actual freezes and or using it as different transitions in and out of movements. Like just go there and mess around because there's a lot of things that can be done there that I think some of you may be overlooking. We did it! That's 10, baby! Whether you hate my list, you like my list, let me know, comment down below. Tell me what was your favorite, what was your least favorite. Am I way off the bat here, or am I kind of on point? On that note, let's see what the almighty alieness has to say here. Consider every round to be the last round. I, it's over, it's over. Hello, cops? Yeah. Come save us because that is the end of the video, everybody. If you like this video, please comment down below. Tell me what you'd like to see next. Subscribe. Like the video, and don't forget to hit that smell, smell. Why do I keep saying smell button? I think I want to smell some buttons, everybody. Bell button for all the new videos. I'll see you tomorrow. Before you go, if you're not completely sick of my face already, don't forget to get my free course, Breaking Made Simple. To access the course, all you have to do is go to the link down below. To get the free download, all you have to do is join the Facebook group, Breaking Made Simple, which is a hub for people to learn, grow, and just get better and become the best b-boys they possibly can, man.